And now the match that I am really excited for here at 125 pounds. Vito Arugel, Pat Glory. Gonna be some fireworks in this one. I expect a very high attack rate, just like it was when they met in the EIWA final where they nearly put 20 points on the board. This is going to be great. Now, as the crowd erupts here for Pat Glory, I, I wanna say first off, the mountain of respect due to Nick Suriano, but he was not ranked in the initial coaches poll because he didn't have a, a, any really sample size because he came on uh, into the second semester at Michigan. But in that initial NCAA coaches poll, it was both Glory and Arujal who were ranked number one each. So these two are very nip and tuck. Arujal won by pin and the dual meet in 2019, Glory won by a 10-8 decision in the EIWA final. Rujal did not compete with Cornell two years ago, taking an Olympic red shirt. 8-0 this season, 39-4 in his career, 33-3 at this weight class. Glory, he's 8-0 this year, 62-7 in the Princeton singlet, and has won 32 matches in a row as a scramble here. Crowd wants two. Very close to a takedown here is Glory as he has this leg pinch. Trying to go head pinch is Arujal. Nothing doing for him, and there's the two. The throw him over the top and score the reversal here as Glory was trying to cover the hips and stay on top. Got a little bit off balance. Arujal comes through and scores the reversal to tie it up here at 2 2. And one of the things you see Arujal do a lot of is he brings his freestyle acumen into his folk style. That head pinch was, was one of the examples. I think we're gonna get some blood time here from Arujal. But already, off the bat, this one has been what is what I've expected. A lot of action from both guys. Glory coming out, scoring that initial takedown, staying very, very methodical in there, hooking that leg, staying tough in there as, uh, as Arujal was trying to throw him over the top with a head pinch. Eventually did throw him over the top, but Glory had already secured the takedown. Now we're gonna see what Arujal has on top once we get back from the blood time. So obviously we don't have much time to really get into the freestyle dynamics with this, uh, with this meet, but I do wanna get folk style, obviously NCAA losses between the two sides, a combined 11 losses, one and one against each other. One loss for Glory, two losses for Rujal against Sebastian Rivera. Rujal actually lost at 133 to his teammate Chaz Tucker as Glory gets two. There's a slide by by Glory to come out and score that takedown. Was digging underhook, came through on the other side, wet slide by, rear standing, and finally got Rujal down to the mat. And now we're gonna see Glory get to what I consider as his signature ride where he locks in on that, that right leg of his opponent, keeps that hip elevated, stays a figure four lock above the knee, and just goes to work and, and really puts a tough ride on guys here as he has Glory flattened out. Excuse I, me, as I, he has a Rujau flattened out. Oh, Rujau able to slip through the figure four. He has a chance to keep both legs free here. Glory gets a hold of the left ankle. Uh, right now, it's still just riding with the two. I do want to close out the losses for Glory. He went 0 and 2 against Spencer Lee, and then 1 and 3 against Nick Piccinini. So you have at least at 125 just a total of six guys factor into these 11 losses for these two wrestlers. They've been undefeated against the rest of the pack. 30 seconds. Looking for a switch here is a rouge out, and he's going to step across and score it. That's two reversals now for Vito Arugel after two takedowns from Patrick Glory. Glory did have one escape, trying for a second here. He's to his feet, has yet to break the hold. Arugel goes for the return, but we're going to whistle things here as it was dangerous. So that is the return that is a point of emphasis for referees here. And the, the challenge coming from Gray what Gray is saying is that Arujao never left the mat. If he left his feet, if he was elevated and came through with that, that back trip, then you see it considered an illegal, an illegal move. 
But what Gray is saying is that he was on a knee and went with that back trip in order to bring him back to the mat. So the referees are over. They're going to take a look at it. Uh, and, and we're going to get a, a final verdict on if or not it was a, an illegal back trip or not. Well, I think we're going to get a great look at it. And this, again, this will remind you, every review we have, you are seeing what the officials see. So there's no wondering, is there something they see we don't? No, we get to see the exact same thing. So here you see two feet. Now, Glory's trying to break the hold here, and there he goes. Did he get that left knee down before the trip? So, the Gray's correct. He did get the knee down, but it did not come before the trip happened. It kind of happened simultaneously, so they're going to stick with the call of one point for, for Glory on the illegal move. I, I think the... the argument for the refs is is the entire momentum linking the sequence together as opposed to having your knee established no extra momentum then having the trip down yeah with the with with the super bowl coming up let's keep it in football terms a little bit there was no evidence no irrefutable evidence to change the call so they stuck with it now we're back to action here with short time left aruzal trying to put a tough ride on for the final five Glory can't get the escape, but again, he did get that point on the illegal move. Arujao, four points on the reversal, so those the against the green points. But as it stands right now through one period, exciting 6-4. This is looking a lot more like the EIWA final when it was 10-8 decision in favor of Glory. But of course, if you're Glory, you don't want to get too reckless. Arujao obviously had the pin. And the 2019 duelist, Glory, gets a quick escape, making it 7-4. Good job by Glory, immediately attacking hands. There hasn't been one takedown by Arujao as of yet. Mind you, they've, they've been on their feet twice, and both those times that they've been on their feet, it's been Glory scoring once. On, and this is the first shot here by Arujao. Immediately trips. Nice head inside single. Wasted zero time finishing. As I was saying, he didn't have any attacks on his feet. He scores one attack, escape, and right back to it. Once again, here is Arujao. He's looking to really get his offense going on his feet. They have yet to lock in that last two, which would tie it up at eight. And now, finally, it does happen. So, even score, 8-8. Eight, eight. Patrick Gloria, two-time All-America at 125, two-time EIWA champion, gets the escape, goes up. 9-8, he was the 2020 Ivy Wrestler of the Year. Arujal finished fourth at 125 in 2019 and was the Ivy Rookie of the Year that year, beating out Glory. Glory getting back to that underhook, clearing the tie is Arujal. I'd expect Arujal to go right back to that single, head inside sweep single that he scored twice on. Tigers really need a Patrick Glory victory, trailing 13 to three. Glory has won his last 32 matches in a Princeton singlet, but Arujao trying to turn the favor. He had a 23 match win streak as a freshman. It snapped in the EIWA final loss to Glory. And there was a shot by Glory, kind of a lax one. If Glory's going to shoot, he has to make sure, at least with the lead, he has to make sure he's not putting himself in bad position. Snapping him down, front head here is Arujao. Keeping a hold of that arm was Glory. Back up to our feet. Glory stalking. Final seconds ticking down. The two will eagerly await this third period. So will the crowd. Cornell's lone Ivy blemish since the 2001-2002 campaign. We are talking 20 seasons. Their lone blemish. A 95 and one mark, their lone blemish came to Princeton obviously two years ago here at Jadwin, which got the Tigers their first Ivy Championship since 1986. Good scramble here. Arujao can't get a hold. Instead, it's Glory trying to get to two. Has to get a hold of that right. He will. Arujao back to his feet, but Glory with the return. Glory leading 11-8. Arujao again back to his feet. This time he'll get the escape. It's 11-9. And Gray wants to challenge. I believe he wants to challenge the takedown. 
Well, I don't know if they have a challenge. That was the second challenge in the match alone. Well, the officials, I think they're going to oblige here. Well, the, the officials are, are, I believe they said that that the other one was not a challenge, that that was, a, that was something they looked at themselves. So they gave that challenge okay. brick back to Gray. This one, Gray wants to challenge. I believe he's challenging the takedown, saying that Glory didn't have full control. Well, it's hard for those at home to see, but you kind of do see the screen here, and it's a very quick look. So we didn't even get a chance to get it to our viewers there. As you saw Joe Dubuque pumping up Patrick Glory. So the, the hand went down as Glory was covering the hip. So takedown here by Glory. Coaches are... Now, we, again, we did see Joe Dubuque pumping up Patrick Glory. Dubuque, the two-time national champion from Iowa. And, and you have a case where those two obviously have a great relationship uh, as 125s. Big package that Princeton Wrestling released before this meet, about a six-minute package talking about how the Tigers, they really want this win to make sure it is a trend as opposed to what some may say was a fluke when Princeton won two years ago. Certainly. They know how important this one is to their chances of winning. And Rougeau firing off a shot, trying to get his leg back. Here is Glory. Now draped over the top. Last time we were in this position, Glory won was able to come out and score the, the takedown, and Glory locked in the crotch, trying to sit to it. Still trying to sit to it, looking to hook this leg. Neutral danger is what Dubuque wants on the edge of the mat. Not gonna get it. Here is Arujao now passes a leg. May get a stoppage here as the, the hip and back of Arujao are bent up a little bit. And now one of the one of the things that, that I took notice of as we went into the change of periods is Arujao shaking out that right hand. It looks like his, 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 his wrist may have been a little bit bent up and a little bit banged up during that period. There's a shot by Arujao. Over yeah. under position here. Arujao trying to dig in. Glory doing a good job of holding on to that wrist. Riding Arujao time needs not a, a takedown at all. It's still 11 9. Arujao needs a takedown. Glory does have a, a stall warning to give. And we're gonna we're gonna see the stall. We should see the stall warning come. We're not gonna see the stall warning come. It's not gonna make a difference one way or the other. And Pat Glory gets the win. And he is going absolutely crazy here as he gets the 11 9 win to stop the bleeding here for, for Princeton. 33 in a row for Patrick Glory. Stays undefeated in a co-number one matchup, according to the coaches. Now, in the media, again, it's 2v3. But Glory, he now his hat, has his hat in the ring with Nick Suriano, among the best at 125. And the Tigers staying in it. It's 13-6 with four left to go. 133 and 141 coming up when we return. Jadwin back in it here. <laughs> 